God bless you this afternoon. I'm Mother Gail Trailer. It is approximately 44 minutes after 4 in the afternoon, and this is a Sunday. This is my Sabbath. If it's not your Sabbath, that's, a, that's okay. Just in case you may have forgotten to read the word, I'm Mother Gail, and I will present to you the gospel, the good news of the coming of God. Let's pray. Dear Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, I praise you, I love you, and glorify your name. For your mercies are everlasting, and your strength is made perfect in our weaknesses. Lord, help me to focus on you and on your word. Use me to suit yourself. Lord, I heard your word today. And I need to respond to it. So bless me. Bless us. Bless us to bless someone else. In the name of Jesus. Perhaps you were um, busy. And you do get busy on Sundays as well. Mothers fathers. Some of us are able to get up to hear the word and some of us not, are not able to fellowship on Sunday. And because of that, and because most of us who have uh, leisure time right now, they can relay the message to you in the hopes that you too will receive the encouragement and the joy that the truth of the gospel brings. In the Nehemiah, the fourth chapter, well, the second verse, first of all, let me tell you about Nehemiah. He's a cupbearer. What's a cupbearer do? Well, a cupbearer is very protective of the king. He's going to taste the wine, taste the food even, just in case someone has poisoned or someone has oh, put something in that is it would danger the leader. These are strange times in which King Artaxerxes, the king, uh, had um, had much to do because uh, the remnant of Jerusalem were uh, left in captivity in the province of the Great uh, uh, Jerusalem. And they were in great affliction. They had had a battle in Jerusalem. They had lost a lot of the precious uh, artifacts and uh, materials necessary for life. Their homes were pilfered and destroyed. Their children were taken captivity. And now it's time for them after the captivity because uh, they were now back in their own jurisdiction and they were going to rebuild the temple for the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Hi, I'm back. Well, Nehemiah continued to do his day job. And uh, he didn't quit it either. He did ask for time off. Had a good position. Of course, it was, uh, was dangerous. Because uh, at that time, 
people hated others. And that's the way it is now. They uh, don't know why they do some of the things or why they say some of the things that they uh, say, but they, they do. And their job is to destroy. And that's the enemy's uh, way of doing things. God came to heal. He came to set free. And he came to deliver. He sent his son for those items. Those three things to heal, to set free, and to deliver. And who does he set free? You and I. The Holy Spirit was given to us for a purpose. And if you are still alive, you have not reached your goal yet. But uh, he saved you for a purpose. And he raised you from a life of sin for a purpose. And we are chosen. We're chosen by God before the foundation of the world. See, so wondering why you're, you're still alive, why you're still here. Uh, of course, it was by no other grace or mercy than by God's grace and mercy. And uh, you were actually on your way to fulfill your destiny. Nehemiah had no idea why he had such a burden. But even the king noticed that burden. Um, in chapter 2 of Nehemiah, in the, uh, let's see, about the first verse, and I'll read it into your hearing. And it came to pass in the month of Nisan, in the twentieth year of Ataxerxes, the king, that wine was before him. And he took up the wine and gave it unto the king. And now I had not been before time sad in his presence. Nehemiah had never lost his joy. He had a good job. He was in favor of the king, and he knew the Lord, so he was blessed, but his countenance was very sad in the king's presence, and the king noticed that uh, Nehemiah was one to keep your eyes focused on. He was, first of all, a man of God. Second of all, he was devoted. Third of all, he was a Jew. So the king attacks to seize, had wine. But not before Nehemiah, the cupbearer, took a sip. Uh... The king asked him, why are you so sad? Why is your countenance so sad? You're not sick. And I have a feeling this is nothing but just depression. Your heart's sad, Nehemiah. Your heart is sad. What's happening with you? Nehemiah said, I, I was very afraid. I was, I was really afraid to tell the king why my heart was so sad. But I went forth and I told him exactly what it was. He says, I've never been sad in your presence, king. I always had the joy of the Lord. Always. I, I trust in him. I live for him. My family and I worship him. And 
uh, he told, further told the king that in the land where my fathers died, there used to be a temple. And uh, we worship there. But now the uh, walls to the city of Jerusalem have been destroyed and they have uh, taken away all of the, how would you say, the booty, B-O-O-T-Y. They have taken away the wealth of Jerusalem. And, and it was where my ancestry, where it all began in the city of Jerusalem. And the king says to him, for what? The king said to me, for what dost thou make request? What's wrong? Whatever you want to tell me about this, I want to know if there's anything I need. Now that's favor. That's favor. When you go to your employer and tell them, look, supervisor, I'm, I don't know what it is. I'm not feeling up to this today. I'm going to do all I can to stay on the job. I'm going to run. When it's time to run, I'm going to walk. When it's time to walk, but I don't. I'm not myself today. Well, the king says to him, um, just tell me what's wrong. Tell me what's on your mind. Maybe I can help you. Well, when Nehemiah told him what was on his mind about the sepulchers and the wall that surrounded the city of his father's birth and his birth, the king said to him, and the queen was sitting there with him, with her, with him. He says, how long are you going to be in Jerusalem? This is, this came, this came to us, now how long are you going to be in Jerusalem? Even the wife wanted to know this, this guy was such a, a pleasant spirit. He had such a, a heart which was close to God, and he, he was a praying man. And the wife wanted to know, how long are you going to be there? I know you got to go to Jerusalem. He said to, the king said to him, and he said to the king, rather, if it pleases the king. And if I found favor in your sight, would you please send me to Judah, unto the city of my fathers, that I can build it back up? Send me to Judah. And you and I know Judah means praise. Why would God send him, of all places, to Judah? Well, Judah was a place where he would get back his joy. Judah means praise. So he told the king how long he would go, and the king gave him letters and permission, and told him, by the way, Stop by uh, Asaph. He was the king, keeper of the forest. And ask Asaph to give you timber and anything else you need for the building of your people's walls and the sepulcher of your forefathers. Then he came to the governors beyond the river and gave them the king's letters. He packed up everything, 
said, I'll see you soon, King. And he went on about his father's business. The pastor was saying to us, and he enlightened me, that sometimes we complain about, you know, I wish somebody would do this, and I wish that one would do that. I wish that uh, someone would help those teenagers, or help those veteran uh, men who are living on the street, or help those wayward children who are acting unseemly. And most of the time when we are asking God to help them, and the Lord is, is pointing a finger back at us, saying, why don't you help? Why don't you help? You have the power, you have the anointing, you have the ability. You help him. You help her. When Nehemiah came to the governors beyond the river, he gave them the king's letters. And the king had sent captains of the army and horsemen along with Nehemiah. That's so exciting. My goodness. Did he have permission? Yes. Did, uh, did he have a, a vacation day? Yes. He had escorts? Yes. He had favor on his life because he was given permission to go and do the Lord's build, bidding. And that was to build a wall, to help build the walls around Jerusalem. Now there were some enemies there. Whenever you, Pastor said, whenever you get busy doing the Lord's business, you will see enemies, people that hate you, people that are used of the enemy to try to tear down, and to assist you to doubt what God has called for you to do. If any of you uh, have a ministry and, and you're working on that ministry, you and I know how the enemy fights to get you to fulfill not only his will, but to assist in building the wall. Now I looked at it this way. The wall that the children of Israel are building will protect. It will prevent uh, the onslaught of the enemy uh, from overpowering them without them knowing it. The gates, the doors, and the timber was needed to build a house in the sepulcher. They had ravaged Jerusalem. And you can liken that unto today. As I am sitting here sharing the word of God, you can best believe someone will try to destroy the purpose of this message. He doesn't want you to tell the good news. He doesn't want you to encourage anyone. He doesn't want you to live upright. He wants you focused on everything else, anything else. In this case, Nehemiah had, and these were men of God, supposedly, Sanballat, the Horonite, Tobiah, the servant, and the Ammonite, he was an Ammonite, and when the uh, servant Nehemiah 
had gone to Jerusalem, he took a night survey of what was necessary to fulfill God, uh, the, the, the process of the building of the wall. He took a, a walk around the perimeters of what was the walls of Jerusalem. Now you need walls. Everything needs walls to contain, to protect, to defend, help to defend. Our body has a wall. And it's uh, the, I think it's called the derma, the outside. Then there's another layer, epiderm, epidermis, I think it is. And there's a layer after that. So we need walls. It keeps our bodies regulated. It helps to uh, keep the organs in place. It's keeping our minds, our brains from seeping out into other territories. Now, the church has the body of Christ as its walls. And it is recently and, and has always come under attack. The man of God, the people of God, the deacons, the elders, you can believe that somewhere somebody is planning, planning your demise, planning your destruction. But God is with us and he promised never to leave us nor forsake us. God was with Nehemiah because with what he was given to do through the Holy Spirit, no one else could do it but him. No one else could do it but him. Hi, thank you for holding. Well, you and I are placed strategically to build up walls for the kingdom of God's sake. We are not only building walls as in the days of Nehemiah, but we are climbing higher heights and deeper depths. We're learning how to trust him, how to serve him. Uh, Sanballat, Tobiah, and there's one more. Eliashib are co-conspirators in preventing the building of the wall. Their assignment was from the enemy and that assignment they thought that they could cause discouragement, doubt, fear. But you and I must stay focused. There's enemies without the gate. And in this case, there's enemies inside the gate. Well, Pastor had us to look at it this way. Watch as well as As well as for you to see, these are times when all anything can happen. Everything is happening that can happen. Anything happen can happen, but we are to stay focused. We are to stay on our post. We are to magnify His name, and the only way we can do that is to continue to walk in love toward those that are without, even your enemy. 
Sometimes your enemy may come in the form of a relative, a close one, or a distant relative. Such may be the case. And the 4th of July is Wednesday, and a lot of us uh, will come in contact with the enemy. Now remember, he'll use who he will. Not talking from paranoia, but speaking that which is true. People can be used treacherously. So watch and pray while you're at the picnic on the 4th. Watch and as well as pray while you're eating, drinking, enjoying family members and friends. Watch as well as pray. He'll protect you. He'll deliver you. Sometimes those same uh, relatives or those who speak well of you will turn around and try to destroy you through any means necessary. But our Father is making intercession for us. The Holy Spirit is, is interceding. Don't believe everyone is your friend. Don't believe every smiling face is on your side. Watch as well as pray. Well, thank God for Nehemiah. Because he said, I don't have time for the enemy. I don't have time, and I don't have time. Tomorrow I'll be a year older, and I really don't have time. But press onward and upward to a higher calling, I do have time for. And so do you. So do you. These are days in which there's uh, people who are uh, not watching and praying. They're fighting one another, and they're fighting hard and harshly. In the last days, perilous times were to come. That's the word of God. But we, as the children of God, are to stay on the wall. There are yet days to come and people that need salvation those who, who just need the enlightenment that comes through the gospel those whom God would have to join his army see that you watch as well as Resist the devil, and he'll flee from you. And by all means, stay focused. Enjoy those ribs, but stay focused. And you can do that before you go into the enemy's camp. You know who's not saved and who's capable of being used by the enemy. You know this. You know this, and you may love them to the moon and back. Forgive them, for they know not what they do. But put prayer ahead of you, and he'll make the crooked places straight. May God bless you, and keep you, and deliver you from all evil. 
May his peace rest upon you. And let the joy of the Lord be your strength. We are building the wall. We are building the wall. It's not easy, but it sure is doable. Because he says, I can do all things through Christ who strengtheneth me. God bless you. I'm just passing through. Just in case.